Hello Year 8 and welcome to the next instalment of Miss Thomas's Virtual Learning. Today on my daily walk, um, an hour's exercise, I've brought you down to Old Portsmouth and South Sea to show you many monuments that line the shoreline. Today I've brought you first of all to my favourite monument in the whole of the Portsmouth and this is a statue dedicated to Charles I. It's the only statue in the whole of the UK to this man. He was the first and only monarch to be executed um, after the English Civil War. It's just a simple busk, but I really do like the fact that it is the only statue in the UK of him. So behind me, I have the biggest memorial that I'm aware of in Portsmouth. Now this was first um, unveiled in 1924, and it was unveiled to symbolize the 10,000 men who lost their life at sea during World War I. This was a further updated with another 15,000 names of all those who lost their life at sea um, during World War II. Now, as you might be able to see, the sun is a bit bright behind it, but there's an obelisk. Now this is meant and related back to the Egyptians. It's often meant to be pointing up to God to symbolize religion. On top, there is a um, copper sphere. This is oxidized um, and has gone green with age. And around the base, you can see there are four lions. Now these lions are lying down and that's to symbolize kind of relax and peace um, to put these men at rest um, in their final resting place. These 25,000 names, they don't have any grave, so um, they are symbolized here. So if I just take you round, all of these metal plaques represent all of the men um, who lost their life at sea during World War II. And on top of these plaques, you have all of the places that these men served. On top, you can see on the obelisk that they've got the World War I name, so that's the original. And then this bit here, up around the bottom, is the extension of World War II. Unfortunately, I can't get into the museum today due to the COVID-19 um, closures. However, behind me is the D-Day Museum. Inside here, for the 75th anniversary um, of the D-Day landings last year, they unveiled a new statue. Now, this statue is quite important because the base is built on 4,000 bullets, which was made to represent the 4,000 people who died in the first 24 hours of the Normandy landings. On top of that 4,000 um, bullet base is what they believe is the first soldier who died during the D-Day Normandy landings. He was only 28 years old and what they did with his statue last year was they took him around the whole of the UK and to Normandy to tour him and this statue was funded by the National Lottery. Just another example of a local memorial. So here we have a statue of Field Marshal Montgomery of Alamein and also known as Monty. Now this is a life-size statue of him and he was one of the commanders on the day of D-Day and during the Normandy campaign. So this is something you could do also is maybe pick out a someone who is a leading member of your battle and have them in a life-size portrait form. Outside the D-Day Museum, just literally a stone's throw away from Monty, we've got another World War II soldier. Um, this one has been decorated by members of the public with poppies um, and this one represents a soldier of World War II and underneath it's got a poem and um, decades of easy peace may go in their way and tide and time may drift as far apart but who will be shared in us salvage today? We'll hold the highest places in our heart. So this is something else that you might want to do and this was um, unveiled on the anniversary of D-Day and if you look Again, another memorial outside the D-Day Museum, but another idea. So outside they've got different plinths with remember in different languages and the dates of the D-Day battles. Again, something you may want to do. So you can see them just walking down. If I walk with you, you've got remember in English, and then you've got them in all the different languages from across the world. And that goes across to the World War II soldier. Today I bring you across the road to a local memorial um, that's near to me where I live. Now this memorial was built by someone who felt that they needed to commemorate those who are serving in war and conflict around the world today. It's based um, in a little garden as you can see behind me and has lots of benches and bird boxes for people just to come and sit and reflect and think. Not all statues and monuments have to be of people. Now this is an ironwork from New South Wales in Australia. Now this signifies the two nations, Australia and Britain, unifying in friendship. So you've got two linked loops of metal. 
and it signifies the friendship and bond that's now been created from Australia to Portsmouth, those two harbours where the settlers of convicts were first sent. So they went in 1787 from Portsmouth and they sailed all the way off to Australia where the second um, mirror image of this uh, monument is seen. So again, it doesn't have to be people, it could be an object. Not all statues have to commemorate war and conflict. This one is a social meaning behind it. It represents those who went across to America on those first long journeys to start their new life of freedom and liberty over in the United States of America. So you may want to think about the social impact of your conflict and do a memorial to those everyday people who were impacted by that war. A final idea from me is that you could just create a bench. You might have a loved one who served in a battle or in a conflict and you want to remember them. So you may want to just place a battle with the explanation of why it's placed here, overlooking a site or somewhere significant where the battle took place as a memorial to those who served in that war. You may just want to create a memorial with the flags of the serving countries that were involved in your conflict or the armed forces that were involved. This one is exactly the same with a few crosses at the bottom of those in memory.